Example two is a calculator question because, again, I've got cos x minus 6 equals 4 cos x minus 4. I'm going to get all of my values on the same side. So I'm going to subtract 4 cos x on both sides. I'm going to add 6 to both sides, divide both sides by negative 3, and I get cos x equals negative 2 thirds. That value is not on my unit circle. And so as a result, what I need to do is I need to take out my calculator. The question is in radians, so make sure my calculator is in radians. And do cos inverse of positive 2 thirds to find my reference angle, 0 0.841. So my reference angle for x is 0 0.481. If I'm solving this between 0 and 2 pi, cos is negative, so it would be in quadrants 2 and quadrants 3. So I go to my calculator, maybe I store my reference angle as x, find my answer pi minus my reference angle for quadrant 2, pi plus my reference angle for quadrant 3, 2.30 and 3.98. And so what I've done is I haven't even checked my original domain. I just naturally solved between 0 and 2 pi. Then after I solve between 0 and 2 pi, now I'm going to look at my actual domain. My actual domain is between negative pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. So when I'm thinking positive angles, that's 0 between 3 pi over 2. This one's in quadrant 2. This one's good. This one's in quadrant 3. That one's good. But I also have to check negative angles between 0 and negative pi over 2. Can you see that that's quadrant 4? And we have only, because cos is negative, our answers are in quadrant 2 and quadrant 3. So we have no answers in quadrant 4, so that actually doesn't come into effect. And the answers that we got between 0 and 2 pi are the same as if they asked between negative pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, just by coincidence. But as a good way of solving it, solve it between 0 and 2 pi so you can visualize where your answers are. Then after you've done that, check the domain in the question and modify it if you need to. But you also like to solve your answers between 0 and 2 pi because when it asks for the general solution, and in this case it did, our general solution, so tuition, okay, let's try that again. General solution, x equals we have two answers between 0 and 2 pi, 2.30, 3.98. This was in radians, so we can go plus 2k pi, plus 2k pi, where k is an integer. to b to the nearest degree solve this equation. Again, let's get the trig function by itself. This time it's cosecant. I can get cosecant by itself by dividing both sides by the square root of 2. Anytime you have a solving equation with a reciprocal function, after you've got the reciprocal function by itself, we can now change this and say if cosecant of x is 5 over negative 5 over root 2, then sine x will be negative root 2 over 5. Sine is negative. We know this is going to be in quadrant 3 and quadrant 4 from our cast rule. That value is not on our pi plate, so once again, 
we go to our calculator to find our reference angle. Sine inverse. We have a fraction. I'm going to use my fraction button. And when we're finding our reference angle, it's always based on the positive value, so root 2 over 5. We never put our negative value when finding our reference angle, and we get 0.29. So on, for my work, I can say my reference angle is 0 0.29. I'm going to store that value as x. I need to find answers in quadrant 3 and quadrant 4. So in quadrant 3, it'll be pi plus my reference angle. In quadrant 4, it would be 2 pi minus my reference angle. So I get 3.4243 and 5.996, which would be 6.00. to the nearest hundredth. Oh, it says to the nearest degree. Nobody told me. So all we did there was we get into, and this is what's going to happen, because it just happened to me. I'm not going to say it's for sure going to happen to you, but you're going to get into a routine. You're going to start solving and say, I normally solve between 0 and 2 pi, like we did here. We've got our answers between 0 and 2 pi, and now when I went back to check my domain, I realized, oh, it was in degrees. Not a big deal, because we can just go back and change these values, go to our calculator, hit our mode button, change things to degrees, and if you have the newest version, you can go up, re-highlight what you had typed in before so you don't have to retype it. And we find out that to the nearest degree, our reference angle should have been 16 degrees. And so in quadrant 3, 180 plus 16 degrees would be 196 degrees. In quadrant 4, 360 minus 16 degrees would be 344 degrees. That's between, so I'll label it here, these are our answers between 0 degrees and 360 degrees, once around in the positive direction. Now, the question asks from negative 180 to 180. So can you see the positive numbers would be 0 to 180? That's quadrant 1 and quadrant 2. We have no answers in there. The negative answers are going to be between 0 and 180, which is quadrant 4 and quadrant 3. And so we need to rewrite our answers, just put a line through those, because what's coterminal with 344 degrees? That will be negative 16 degrees. What's coterminal with 196 degrees? That will be negative 164 degrees. So a couple of ways you could do that. What I did to get the negative 164 is I said, if it's in quadrant 3 and I'm going in the negative direction, I can go pi minus my reference angle, 180 minus 16, which is 164, and that will be my negative angle. You could also take 196 and subtract 360 and you'll get negative 164 as well. So there are our answers between negative 180 and 180. To write your general solution, x equals, you take your two answers between 0 and 360. Add 360 degrees times k for your coterminal angles, and you've written your general solution. Calculator questions for practice 6 and 7.